it's hot. It is hot. <sighs> you wouldn't see, look, you wouldn't be British. If you didn't complain when it was hot, you didn't complain when it was cold. It is very, very hot in here in Australia right now. But look, we can't complain. We're here. We're back. Mm, we got the coffee. What's going on, YouTube fam? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So today I want to share with you guys the truth and the reality about Forex funding companies. And just share some points and tips with you guys that hopefully this will help you before you go and look to take your next funding challenge. The reason for wanting to make this video is because people ask me about my opinion of funding companies and they ask me if if they should go for funding or they should be trading personal. This brings me on to the first point of don't go for a funding challenge. And I'm just going to use the standard rules of, you know, 8 to 10%, 5% daily drawdown, 10% max drawdown. That's just what the, the realistic figures that I'm going to go off for this video. So you shouldn't be going for a funding company unless you're making more than 10% on a consistent basis. Now, if you look at your data and you've just made 10% in one month and you've only done that maybe twice this year, then why would you go for a funding company? It makes zero sense. Yeah, I see a lot of people doing it where, you know, they say to me, Aaron, look, I just made this, I just made 10% this month. If I'd done my challenge now, well, I could have passed and become a funded trader. But it's like, okay, cool, you didn't. But are you doing it on a consistently basis? If the answer is yes, amazing, go for a challenge. If the answer is no, then you're not ready to go for a challenge. Now, you have to prove to yourself that you are truly ready to do this and you can actually pass these challenges on a consistent basis. Otherwise, if you make 5% here, 6% there, 7% there, that's amazing. And you have to understand that, that that is amazing. And that's another point that I'm gonna go in after as well. And that brings me to the next point of challenges are very hard for your psychology in trading, okay? I don't even like that the fact they're called a challenge. Trading should never be a challenge. Trading should never have profit target rules. Trading should be completely neutral. And taking funding firms brings in a hell of a lot more emotion than if you're trading a personal capital because you know that you have to hit this goal in order for you to become a funded trader. And I think a lot of people who do the funding companies are doing the funding companies because they want to become full traders and they maybe don't have the personal capital to trade live on their own, which I completely understand. I completely get that. That's what has happened for a lot of people who have asked me my opinion on the challenges. The best way that you can overcome this is try not to think of it as a challenge and please don't take a challenge if you're in the mindset of I can't really afford this and I have to pass this and I have to make this work because that is the worst place that you could ever possibly imagine to trade from. When I first started my journey, I went full-time trading probably a lot quicker than I should have done, but I basically quit my job and I just went all in and that was my only plan. I had no backup. Don't get me wrong. I had to go through the psychology aspects to get out of it. But if I was to say to someone else, would I recommend someone to do that? No. In a trading career where you know, it's a 70% psychology game, maybe even more. Trading from a perspective of, I can't really afford to take this challenge. I have to pass this because I need the refund and I need to start making money from trading. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. I've seen this happen to a lot of people. They pay the money that they can't really afford to lose. They don't pass the challenge and then they quit trading. But to me, this makes no sense. If you're financially not in a position where you could even afford to do the challenge in the first place, then Maybe you just have to wait a little bit longer and, and take advantage of the free trials that most of these companies have, but use them in the sense of actually using correct risk management and actually managing your positions very, very well. Don't hold on to insane winning positions that you wouldn't normally hold on to because you want to secure the profits. Trade it as if it was an actual real life challenge account. So I think that's probably the, one of the main things is the psychology is the hardest part of these challenges. It's not making the 10 R a month. That's not hard to do. It's doing that in the most neutral perspective possible, keeping the mind right and having a plan in the first place. If you start taking the challenge and then you go into a little bit of drawdown, guess what? You then start thinking to yourself, wow, well, now I need to make 13% and now I need to make 14%. I'm never going to do that. Let me start increasing my risk and let me see if I can do it that way. You take bigger losses, take bigger losses, you're going to bigger drawdown. You might creep a little bit back up and then you just take bigger dips. It's like, it's like your trading goes like this when your trading should be steady going up. Again, you know, if you're not making 10% consistently a month, but you're making percent consistently a month, maybe you're making 2% a month, you're making 4% on average a month, that is fantastic returns. And people who do the challenges and, and tell me when they have done them, but they haven't passed, I say, did you make money this month? Yes, amazing. Regardless of if you passed the challenge or not, you made money this month. You are ahead of most people in this game. But don't doubt yourself just because you didn't hit the unrealistic target to you of 10% every single month. If you're just hitting 10% average, maybe once, maybe twice a year, you never know when their months are gonna come, right? Otherwise we'd be billionaires and we'd all be <laughs> living very extravagant lives. You never know when these 10% months, so you need to improve your strategy, improve your risk management so that you are hitting 10% consistently 
on average a month. Otherwise, it's completely pointless. So keep the mind right. And more importantly, don't think of it as a challenge. Trade in a neutral perspective. If you don't pass, but you end the month in profit, fantastic, you get another free go. Maybe you can do it next month. But don't get me wrong, I get it. You know, we all want to become full-time traders uh, as, as quick as we can. And I understand that you probably see a lot of people on the social media showing you these incredible profits and these insane payouts from funding companies, which is definitely possible for some people. But if it's not possible for you just yet, understand that and work on what you can do to improve that. So when you are ready to go for the challenge, then go for it. But if your only source of income is going to be trading and you're not working maybe, let's say, a job on the side and, and putting 500 pounds to go and try one of these challenges, I would highly advise against it. Have something steady in the background. Don't try and become a full-time trader going from zero to one investing a hundred pounds to thinking I'm going to get a, a funded account and I'm going to be able to be full-time trader and my life just going to be easy because unfortunately that's not the reality. This brings me on to the third point, which is funded accounts shouldn't be looked at from a long-term perspective. In my opinion, this is just my opinion from my experience. I know a lot of people who have, who have become funded and they've pulled out a little bit of money and then they've lost the account. If you want to go to full-time trading with one 100k funded account, you should not do that. It's very, very unlikely that you're going to be able to trade that 100k funded account over a long period of time. And that's just going to be it purely because the psychology aspect. Again, you know, if you go into, you start going into drawdown, you start thinking, well, shit, now I need to make this much just to be able to get a payout this month. Or I need to be, I need to be able to make 15% just to even pass the challenge. Whereas if you're trading personal capital, then there is no targets. There is no goals. There is pure freedom. You can swing trade. You can day trade. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. But if you can use them to pull some money out, let's say if you make, make, I don't know, five, $10,000 from your fund account, if you can pull that out, put that straight into personal capital. Don't just go out and spend it. I mean, spend a little bit, treat yourself, you know, everyone's have to treat themselves. But use the money that you're pulling out from that funded account to go straight into personal. Because personal is the entire goal and it should be the absolute goal with everyone who's getting involved with trading. Funding companies shouldn't be looked at from a long-term perspective because the psychology aspects, but who knows, these companies could go tomorrow. And what are you gonna do if you have all this capital in this company and you're seeing this from a long-term perspective and they tomorrow they're gone they all shut down you know it's unlikely but it's a possibility so what you want to do is you're really pulling out your money and putting it into a personal and trading that personal on the side as well because that is where you want to be in your training because you have the full freedom you have no rules and you don't have to have a huge account to be able to be making consistently money on a monthly perspective remember if you have a 50k account with a funding company and you can only lose 10%. You're only trading a 5,000 pounds account, okay? Understand that. Exactly the same as if you're trading a 100K account, you can't lose more than 10%. Okay, so really you only have a 10K account. Now this brings me on to the next point of these funding companies aren't there to see you do well. I hate to break it to you, but they're just not. If you want my honest opinion of how I think these companies make money, is I think these companies make money off everyone failing the challenge. And the people who do pass and do become consistent, well, they get a payout from the actual pool of people that have failed because what? Trading has a failure rate of what, 95%? And they just have to pay out 5% of the 95 that have all failed the challenge. So if you if you are spending all this money, so I don't actually believe you ever get a live account. And this is just for the big companies. Don't get me wrong. Um, maybe there is some companies out there that are truly there to help you become a consistently profitable trader. But for the most part, the biggest names in the industry, they are not there to see you do well as a trader, believe you me. But if you can use them, like I say, to build your personal capital, then that's how they should be used. But I just want to get people away from the perspective of if you get this funded account, that's your be all and end all. And that's going to be your escape from your job to become a full-time trader because I just don't think it's the goal. And there's nothing more demotivating than making consistent profits for a company and seeing absolutely nothing. If you hit 10% and then you go into the verification and then you only make 4% and then you got to start over again, well, you've just made 14% that you could have made in your own personal capital. I know people who've been doing funding challenges for at least six months. And this to me is just absolutely insane. Six months and seeing no personal gain, you're going to blow up. Everyone's going to blow up. If I was doing that for six months, I was doing funding companies for six months and I still wasn't passing, I was seeing no profits, I would think, oh man, is trading even for me? Are people actually making money? And this is what I want you guys to do who are doing funding challenges, maybe not necessarily passing. Look back the previous months where you've been doing these challenges. Have you been making consistent profit percent return? Even if it's just 1% a month, have you been consistently making money? If the answer is yes, good job. You're a good fucking trader and don't doubt yourself because of these funding companies. And you know, have personal capital on the side as well. Like I said, you could pull out a couple hundred a month even with a $5,000 account. 
You could be making a couple of hundred a month and potentially even a thousand a month if you're consistent with a good win rate and good risk management. My advice to you guys would be work a job and use that job to build your personal capital. Or if you're one of the people who is making 10% consistently a month, go for a funding company, absolutely smash it and milk it for everything it's worth and take that money out and put it into a funding company and use the companies as much as you can because they're not a long-term perspective. And I think most traders already know that, but for the ones that don't, you wanna use them, you wanna get as much from money from them as you can, pull it out, put it into personal, and then you won't even have to ever have to worry about doing another fucking challenge ever again. So all in all, I don't think funding companies are a bad thing. However, I don't also think they're a good thing for everyone. Key takeaways is you should only be going for them if you're consistently, be looking at your data, if you're consistently making the profit target every single month on average. If you're not, then this is the reality check to say to yourself, well, yeah, why why, why would I do it? It makes no sense. Am I just trying to gamble that I'm gonna make 10% this month? Don't be that guy. If you are making eight to 10% consistently a month, amazing. Do a challenge, get your money, take it out and put it into personal because personal capital is the ultimate goal for everyone. And I miss the old days of, you know, going a job and building personal capital. These funding companies have become a sort of get rich quick scheme. And don't get me wrong, they have their place, but they're not for everyone. And prioritize your psychology, your mental capital in this game and your longevity in this game is much more important than you thinking you can pull out a quick 10 grand and that's gonna be your life sorted, okay? Prioritize your psychology, don't think of it as a challenge. Stay neutral, never trade from a perspective of, I need to make money. If you don't really have the money to be able to pay for one of these challenges then don't do one because you're just going to blow up in the long run and let this be a lesson for you guys to say build up the data first build up the data then do the challenge make your money put it to personal and then you can live the good fucking life <laughs> so i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you do have any more questions or you want any more psychology tips on funding challenges then feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll be sure to help you guys out. With that being said, catch you all in the next one. Appreciate you all tuning in. Remember, YouTube lives Wednesday, Friday. See you guys there. Peace.